Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we're looking at accents around the UK and we're going to focus in on the city of Birmingham. The regional accent, or perhaps we could even call it a dialect because they have very particular phrases that they use, is called Brummy. Brummy. Brummy is how we refer to people who speak in a particular way who are from Birmingham. We can also refer to them as a group of people by saying, oh, they are Brummy. People can call themselves Brummy. Oh, I'm Brummy. Yes, I come from Birmingham. And you might even hear it as a noun. I am a Brummy. B-R-U-M-M-Y. A Brummy is the name which describes someone who speaks in a particular way. I'm about to play a clip from Birmingham Local TV. I say local TV, but these days regional accents are broadcast all across the UK. Since 1990, regional accents have been encouraged in the UK, especially in the media. Before 1990, the face of the UK, or the face of the media, always presented Queen's English, or at least as close to it as was possible. Let's listen to presenter Alison Hammond as she talks. Now, I want you to pay particular attention to the letter A because in received pronunciation and in the south of the UK, the letter A is often pronounced as an R. It's almost like an O. For example, I'm going to France. In American English, that's very different because they always say A. I'm going to France. And here in the UK, that R, as you go further north, becomes a little bit harder. It becomes France. Ah. So if we go from R to A. And in American English, it becomes A. So let's listen to Alison and let's see how she pronounces the letter A. Ah, and this gives you a little clue that we're moving north. The last time uh, I saw you was really, really in 2002, and you were the first person to interview me. Coming out of the house. We couldn't find that clip, but don't worry. I found an amazing clip of something I'm going to show you a little bit later. Shall I show it to you now? The way Alice... Right. So, you can see there that... Uh, the letter A changes slightly, and so do the other vowels. My, for example, becomes moi, moi, the letter Y. If you'd like to hear more about uh, accents from around the UK, I can strongly recommend a video clip which is called 20 British Accents in one video and that comes from a video channel which is on YouTube called Eat, Sleep and Dream English and that's where I've taken this sound of Alison Hammond from. So I recommend you go there, Eat, Sleep, Dream English is the name of the channel on YouTube And the video clip in question is called 20 British Accents in One Video. As we move further north, those vowel sounds change. The consonants don't really change so much. Sometimes the R, the letter R, 
becomes more pronounced. Because as you know, in the south of England, if we look at the word Lida, the R is almost whisked away, Lida. But in the north, that R sound can become Lider, er, with a, a kind of curved soft R, all the way up to Lider, with a hard R. So the further north you go, the more the vowel sounds become a little bit skewed or twisted, and some, but not many of the consonants, also receive a little bit of a harder sound. But in general, the accents in the north become a little bit more stressed. And the people speak not necessarily louder, although that's part of it, but they tend to push the letters out just a little bit more. Now, this is not good for a person who's learning English. So how do you deal with that? What, what's the strategy for getting over this? Well, as I've mentioned before, walking around the world as some kind of digital nomad is not a good idea when you're learning English. From the very beginning, you should mark a territory and claim it as it is yours. Let me tell you a little story. I remember when I was a little boy, I went to school with a boy. He was my best friend and his name was Chris. Now for me, Chris was simply another British boy. We played together. We did all the things that boys usually do. And then one day, he came to our house to visit, and my mother asked him, how is your parents? Or how are your parents? And he responded, fine, do you know them? And my mother said, yes, of course, I remember when they came from Poland during the war. Now, this boy had a very British surname and a very British first name. I knew nothing about his parents being from Poland, because, of course, these days Polish immigrants keep their names, they have their same identities. But as my mother explained, in the old days, you had no choice but to fit in. So, for example, you arrived from Poland, as happened to my friend Chris's parents. Apparently, the father uh, went to work for the local factory and they asked him, what is your name? And, of course, the man said, oh, my name is, and he used a Polish surname. I don't know any Polish surnames, but let's say Lopovich, okay? It sounds more Russian. Maybe it is. I don't know. And the factory team, the people who worked in the factory, would immediately respond with, what? Lupovich? We're not having any of that here. We won't remember it. And we don't know it. Let's just call you Christopher Robin. Or maybe if they were eating a particular type of cake that day, they would just look around for the first thing that they could see. Let's just call you Christopher Eccles. Eccles cake. By the way, Eccles cake is delicious. And so they would just choose a name and give it to the person. That name would stick. And then that person would accept that name, that new identity, and would be affirmed into it by the community. And of course, depending on the country they came from, some of them were very happy to forget their past. I'm telling you all of this story to help you realize that 
identity is kind of a big issue. If you're planning to immigrate to a particular city, let's say, for example, Washington or London, you should really begin to examine their media from the very beginning and make that city yours. If you don't do that, one day you listen to American media, the next day you listen to British media, you'll really be losing out. You'll be losing out on the possibility to connect with people who may even be able to help you in the future. You'll be losing out on knowing what's happening both politically and culturally in that place. And this is important because it makes you more ready for when you get there. Of course, I do understand for people who want to immigrate to the English world, especially in the beginning, they simply don't know where they're going to be. But as soon as you do know, it's really important to narrow down your media and begin shadowing with that particular city or town's media. This is very, very important, not only for the sake of your English, but also for the sake of your identity. These days we all go to other countries, but we don't really assimilate. We kind of stand on the outside and we say, oh, you're Spanish, I'm British, and I'm here in Madrid. But we still have the kind of attitude of, oh, you're different from me. And the reason for that is because that's really how we feel. We don't feel welcomed. We don't feel affirmed. But by looking closely at a country's media, at the country's people, you would know exactly how to fit in and assimilate you'd be able to find clubs to join which might suit you. You would recognize idioms and comedy. You'd begin to get into the minds of the people. If you haven't started yet your journey of choosing a city somewhere in the UK or in America or wherever, I strongly suggest you do that. If you can't do that, because you don't know where you want to move to, then choose a city anyway and use the media in that city and you can always change it later on. But you want to avoid going from country to country daily because it will confuse you. Even me, when I watch American TV shows, I can understand as little as 75% all the way up to 99%, depending on how local they're being. Because the moment they start talking about different shops or different American things, uh, such as maybe churches or types of companies that they have, especially cafes, I mean, of course, I recognize things like uh, McDonald's, and I'm beginning to understand now that they have a shop called Macy's, but uh, I, I wouldn't uh, automatically know these things unless, of course, they exist here in the UK as well. So I'm just using this as an example. You need to really begin to drill down, narrow down your media. And that doesn't mean narrowing down your English. It just means that you need to begin to look for friends, people to affirm you, ideas and stories and creativity of a particular place. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. See you soon. Bye-bye.